Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is and always shall be. Brothers and sisters, I am sure that if we think about this gospel of the wedding feast and about the man who was there without a wedding garment, we will probably assume that the wedding garment is a symbol for a condition that this man has. I mean, the gospel itself says that there were many people who came, both good and bad. And we will probably assume that the lack of a wedding garment is a symbol for a moral uh, impurity, a moral defect of some kind, a failing on the part of this man. And that may be a, a plausible interpretation of this gospel. But another way of looking at it, and a way that we can look at it in light of the mind of the church, the thinking of the fathers, especially uh, the great uh, fathers of the church, St. Gregory of Nyssa, Gregory Nazianzus, St. John Chrysostom, uh, St. Maximus the Confessor, St. Nicholas Cavasilas, all of whom spoke on this topic uh, and who were astute students of the Old Testament. Uh, in their commentaries and in their interpretations of the account of the fall of man in Genesis, in the third chapter, all of these fathers comment on one very particular verse, which is the verse 21, in which it says the Lord God, after the fall, after Adam and Eve had broken their covenant with God and had attempted to acquire external knowledge apart from God by eating of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Lord God expelled them from the garden and he clothed them with garments of skin. Remembering, of course, that up until then they had had no clothing. But he took these skins and he clothed them because they knew at this point that they were naked and they were ashamed. And so we see the incredible change that came about in Adam and Eve between the time when they were in a state of innocence and purity, when they had no shame, and the time when then, through their own self-action, their self-decision to uh, break covenant with God and to disobey Him and bring shame upon themselves, that they became aware of a different quality to their condition. And to alleviate this shame, to cover the shame that they had, and to address their, the ill which had come upon them, God covered them with these garments of skin. And for these Greek fathers, the garments of skin represent the loss of the primordial state that we shared in the garden with, with God, in which everything was nourishing, everything was good, there was no pain, there was no suffering, there was no death, there was no separation and division. Everything we did, everything that Adam and Eve did in the garden brought them to knowledge and unity with God. The garments of skin represent our fallenness, and this is the state in which we live, a state of fallenness. Uh, and everything in human life, everything in human endeavor comes under this rubric of the garments of skin. So our technology, our science, our mathematics, our poetry, art, every endeavor of human life, politics, society, government, all of the things that we undertake bear with it the mark of these garments of skin. Because in the disobedience of Adam and Eve, 
man demonstrated his autonomy from God. And he introduced separation through his own willfulness. And here then, in human society, in human intellectual activity, we are susceptible. We are uh, inclined even to, pr pr to maintain and to uh, give rein to our autonomy as fallen individuals, to self-express in some way, and no longer to reveal the unity that once existed in God's kingdom, that we were made in his image to reflect his glory. But we shun this in order to do something of our own for ourselves. And so the man in this wedding feast who is in a garment that is not appropriate to the wedding is this autonomous individual, this self-willed person, the person who seeks to self-express rather than to reveal the glory of God with which he was invested at the time of his creation. And this is our challenge, then, in the fallen world, which has been remediated through the incarnation, death and resurrection of Christ, through his union of divinity and humanity in his own person. He has shown us a possibility of, retain, of reclaiming that intimacy with God, that union that we enjoy in the garden. But as we undertake all of our activities, all of the many things that we must do as humans living in society in this world, we must seek not autonomy, not self-expression, not individualism, but we must seek to find and to do God's will in and through all of those endeavors, thereby transfiguring them and allowing our own activity instead to be the activity of God himself. Amen. Amen.